ooh, ooh, look at this paper. Look at the author, especially the author that has my name. It is me. I'm a published scientist now. All right, all right. Personal geeking out aside, this is a very neat paper, and it was wonderful to be a part of it. Megaraptorian dinosaurs are frustrating, mostly because they're not very complete. They were tyrannosauroids, or at least closely related, meaning that when you think of super early tyrannosaurs like Guanlong, the first Megaraptorans probably weren't that different. But we don't know for sure, mostly because the ones that we do have fossils of are very partial and incomplete, including many of the earliest Megaraptorans known, things like Fukui Raptor, which honestly, in the grand scheme of things, is a fairly complete Megaraptoran. You can see the reconstruction mounted here, but the holotype, the first one found, is in the lower right of this image. And you can see that it isn't some beautiful fossil with all of the pieces. That said, Fukui Raptor and some other material comes from the northern continents, along with other Tyrannosaurid fossils. But during the late Cretaceous, the Megaraptorans are nowhere to be found in the northern hemisphere, and the non-Megaraptoran Tyrannosauroids, the Tyrannosaurids, are not found in the southern continents. So where did these groups come from? Were they always in the south and then move north in a few rare cases like Fukui Raptor? Or rather, did they start in the north and then move south? The first thing we did is collected data. We got formation data and age data for how old the rocks were, and then body size data for almost every Megaraptoran and Tyrannosauroid dinosaur. This was then put into the program BioGeoBears, which has been very well established as a software for studying biogeography. And for Megaraptorans, we found that the distribution of the ancestral Megaraptorans would have been in Eurasia, which were then able to migrate into Northern Africa and across the Southern supercontinent of Gondwana. And that would have been before the total breakup of Pangaea. That's about when I was brought onto this project. And I had a different question, at least slightly, because most early Cretaceous Megaraptorans and Tyrannosauroids are relatively small. But after the Turonian stage of the Cretaceous, they were able to achieve massive sizes, either because of the climate directly, or potentially because of the climate instead killing their main competitors, the Carcharodontosaurids. So I and other authors on the paper collected as much climate data as we could for each of these formations that is containing a Megaraptoran or a Tyrannosaurid. And just real quick, remember how I said most early Cretaceous examples are small? Well, Sinotyrannus and Eutyrannus are large, and based on current modeling of the environments they lived in, it would have been relatively high elevation and probably saw some cold and snow, which isn't like the rest of the planet at that time. There's also debate about Tyrannosaurus rex with this idea, because there's competing hypotheses on whether Tyrannosaurus rex came from the north of Asia across the Bering Land Bridge, or evolved in the southern portion of North America. If large body sizes are linked to colder climates directly, then that would support the more northern hypothesis, but not the southern. And running all the climate data for my hypothesis, we found there's no real trend for cooler temperatures and large body sizes, so yeah, the idea that I had, that, hey, they got big because of the climate specifically, was not correct. However, after the Turonian, there was global cooling, after which point large sizes did become common. But again, not necessarily directly linked. Instead, it's more likely that the cooling caused the extinction of the Carcharodontosaurs, which then facilitated future evolution of large body sizes during the late Cretaceous. Meanwhile, Eutyrannus and Sinotyrannus in the early Cretaceous are just outliers. That also means that while climate didn't really influence the gigantism in Tyrannosaurus rex, it still could have evolved in Asia before crossing into North America. And based on our findings, that's what happened. So the Southern hypothesis is not supported by our data. And that sort of gigantism evolved multiple times across the group, potentially linked to cooler climates, but also not directly caused by them. It's, there's a lot of data that's floating around and we just need higher resolution for a lot of it. Hopefully with this, we can make predictions, like that there should be Megaraptoran fossils in Africa. However, historic impoverishment of the continent and rugged terrain can make finding fossil sites in Africa very, very difficult but they almost certainly should be there. And that's because by the time that group originated and what was probably the middle Jurassic, they were able to get into Northern Africa and then before the breakup of Pangaea spread to all of the other continents except North America. Meanwhile, the Tyrannosaurs hung out in the North, keeping much of their original distribution across the Northern Hemisphere. And an extinction at the end of the Jurassic likely killed off many, if not all of the North American Jurassic species, such as Stoxosaurus, 
But however, during the late Cretaceous, there was a return of the Bering Land Bridge, and that allowed their return to the continent. And with the die-off of the Carcharodontosaurus, they rose to prominence in the north, just like the Megaraptorans did in the south. Thanks for watching, everyone. It was really exciting to be a part of this project. I finally get to say, hey, I'm a scientist. And also, I am sorry that the videos have been going slower. Doing research is a lot of work, uh, believe it or not. So I'm going to try and keep it going. I just really wanted to focus on this first project as it was getting done, um, and then some of the other ones that I'm working with. So now I'm ready to uh, start going back into the, the raptor chatter writing and uh, buckling down on that a little bit more, as I'm still continuing to do research, but just with a better understanding of what each entails. So, again, thank you for sticking with me through this. Love you guys, love everyone who watches the channel and gives me thumbs ups and likes and subscribes and all that kind of stuff. This might be my first time saying uh, any of those words in a single video. Um, join the Patreon while you're at it. <laughs> um, all that said, be safe, take care. Don't go extinct. <laughs>